Elements have many properties that exhibit periodic trends. These trends, in turn, allow us to understand the periodic table. Let's look more closely at four of the most important periodic trends. We will see that the size of an atom, as measured by its atomic radius, exhibits a periodic trend. The energy needed to remove an electron from an atom, its ionization energy, also exhibits a periodic trend. A third periodic property, the electron affinity, represents the energy gained when an electron is added to an atom. A fourth periodic property, the electronegativity, reflects an atom's tendency to share electrons in a chemical bond. The first periodic property we'll explore is the ionization energy. The first element in the periodic table, hydrogen, has one electron and one proton. For simplicity, we'll sketch the electron's motion as if it were a circular path around the nucleus. Removing the electron from this atom requires work. The amount of energy required to remove the electron completely, the ionization energy, is 1,312 kilojoules for each mole of hydrogen atoms. Now let's look at the second element, helium. The two protons in each helium nucleus strongly attract both electrons in a helium atom. It takes more work to pull electrons off of helium than off of hydrogen. In fact, helium has the highest ionization energy of any atom in the periodic table. The ionization energy of helium is 2,372 kilojoules per mole. The next element, lithium, has three protons and three electrons. Only two electrons can occupy the 1s orbital. So the third electron occupies the much larger 2s orbital. The 1s electrons are mostly in between the outer electron and the protons. These two negatively charged 1s electrons offset two positively charged protons in attracting the outer electron onto the lithium atom. This process is called shielding. It is very easy to remove this 2s electron from only one net positive charge. So the ionization energy of lithium is only 520 kilojoules per mole. The next element, beryllium, has four protons and four electrons. The pair of 1s electrons can only offset two of the positive charges in the nucleus. The 2s electrons see both remaining positive charges, so it's harder to ionize beryllium than lithium. The ionization energy of beryllium is 899 kilojoules per mole. Let's extend these trends to the other elements. In general, as we go down a column, the outermost electrons are in bigger orbitals, so the ionization energy gets smaller. As we go to the left across a row, the electrons are attracted by fewer protons, so the ionization energies again get smaller. This regular behavior across the periodic table is why ionization energies are said to exhibit a periodic trend. Let's zoom in and explore some exceptions to this trend. Nitrogen atoms have seven electrons orbiting a nucleus that contains seven protons. The two innermost electrons in the 1s orbital are held very tightly. 
The remaining electrons are called the valence electrons. Two valence electrons are in the 2s orbital, and one electron occupies each of the three 2p orbitals. Electrons in the 2p orbitals are more easily removed than those in the 2s orbital. The ionization energy of nitrogen is 1,402 kilojoules per mole. The next element, oxygen, has eight protons and eight electrons. Again, the 1s electrons are held very tightly, so there are six valence electrons in an oxygen atom. Like nitrogen, oxygen has two electrons in its 2s orbital but has four electrons, not three, in the 2p orbitals. The paired last electron is repelled by the other electron in its same orbital. Even though oxygen has an additional proton in its nucleus, this repulsion makes the ionization energy of oxygen lower than that of nitrogen. Continuing to the right is fluorine, with nine protons and nine electrons. Taking away the 1s electrons leaves seven valence electrons, two in the 2s orbital and five in the 2p orbitals. The most easily removed electron is again paired up in a 2p orbital, so fluorine should be easily ionized. However, fluorine has an extra proton in its nucleus compared to oxygen. This increased positive charge makes the ionization energy of fluorine higher than that of oxygen. The ionization energy of fluorine is 1,681 kilojoules per mole. The last element in this sequence is neon, with 10 protons and 10 electrons. Ignoring the two 1s electrons, leaves us with a filled valence shell of two 2s electrons and six 2p electrons. Although the most easily removed 2p electron is again paired up, neon has yet another positive charge on its nucleus. In addition, neon has some extra stability from its filled shell of valence orbitals. Neon, at the right of the periodic table, is the most difficult element to ionize in its row. Neon continues the periodic trend of ionization energies, increasing as one moves to the right of the periodic table. In fact, neon is the most difficult element to ionize other than helium. The ionization energy of neon is 2,081 kilojoules per mole. Now let's explore the periodic trend in atomic radii. We can't directly measure the size of an atom, but we can estimate it from the space that the atom occupies in a molecule. Using this approach, the atomic radius of hydrogen, half of its diameter, is approximately 0.37 angstroms, or 0.37 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. The extra proton in helium holds the electrons more tightly, so helium is smaller than hydrogen. The atomic radius of helium is only 0.32 angstroms. Lithium, on the other hand, has its outermost electron in the 2s orbital. Lithium is therefore larger than hydrogen, with an atomic radius of 1.52 angstroms. Beryllium, to the right of lithium, has an additional proton to attract its electrons. Since its electrons are held more tightly, beryllium is smaller than lithium, with an atomic radius of 1.13 angstroms. 
Extending this trend to the entire periodic table, the radius of an atom generally increases down a column and decreases across a row. Since the most tightly held electrons are the most difficult to remove, atomic radii and ionization energies are very closely related periodic trends. A third periodic property is the electron affinity. Adding an electron to lithium forms a negatively charged atom called an anion. The electron can be put into an empty position in the 2s orbital of lithium. This process releases 60 kilojoules per mole of lithium atoms. The release of energy means a positive affinity, so the sign of the energy is inverted. The electron affinity of lithium is 60 kilojoules per mole. In contrast, beryllium atoms don't attract electrons. In fact, both the 1s and 2s orbitals of the beryllium atom are filled with electrons. Adding another electron to form the beryllium anion requires 18 kilojoules of energy per mole of beryllium atoms. Following the convention, we invert the sign of this energy and obtain that the electron affinity of beryllium is negative 18 kilojoules per mole of beryllium atoms. Moving to the right is the boron atom. Compared to beryllium, boron has an extra fifth proton in its nucleus. Thus, even though the additional electron must go into the 2p orbital, this process is favorable for boron, unlike the situation for beryllium. Addition of an electron to boron releases 27 kilojoules per mole of energy. The electron affinity is obtained by inverting the sign of this quantity and is thus positive 27 kilojoules per mole of boron atoms. In general, electron affinities decrease going down a column because the extra electrons must occupy larger orbitals. Electron affinities increase going across a row because the increased nuclear positive charge more strongly attracts an additional electron. There are, however, many exceptions to the periodic trend for electron affinity. Let's look at a first example starting with the element carbon. A neutral carbon atom has six total electrons but only four of these are valence electrons. Two electrons are in the 2s orbital and two are in the 2p orbital set. Addition of an electron to carbon is favorable because the electron can occupy an empty 2p orbital. Some extra stability is gained by production of a half-filled 2p valence shell. Formation of the carbon anion releases 122 kilojoules per mole of carbon atoms. Carbon's electron affinity is thus plus 122 kilojoules per mole. The next element, nitrogen, has seven total electrons, only five of which are valence electrons. Two are in the 2s orbital, and three are in the 2p orbital set. Forming a nitrogen anion requires placing the extra electron in one of the occupied 2p orbitals. The repulsion between the existing electron and the new electron is so large, energy is required in order to form the nitrogen anion. Seven kilojoules per mole of energy is required to form this anion. So the electron affinity of nitrogen is negative 7 kilojoules per mole. 
Moving to the right, the increased nuclear charge produces positive electron affinities for oxygen and fluorine, as expected from the periodic trend. A final example is neon. All of neon's valence orbitals are filled with electrons. The electron-electron repulsion during formation of a neon anion thus overwhelms any weak attraction of the electron by the nucleus. An extra electron would have to occupy the non-valence loosely held 3s orbital. Neon has a high ionization energy, not wanting to lose any electrons, and also has a very negative electron affinity, not wanting to gain any electrons. Neon is therefore an inert gas. A fourth periodic trend is displayed by the atomic electronegativity. The electronegativity indicates an element's tendency to share its electrons in a chemical bond. In a tug of war for bonding electrons, atoms with nearly equal electronegativities will form a covalent bond, with each atom sharing the electrons almost equally. On the other hand, atoms with very different electronegativities will form an ionic bond where the electron pair is closer to the atom with the higher electronegativity. Electronegativities also exhibit a periodic trend. An atom's electron affinity, balanced by its ionization energy, will determine its electronegativity. In one method to compute the electronegativity, we take the sum of the ionization energy and the electron affinity and divide by two. This method yields an experimental procedure for determining the electronegativity of an atom. The electronegativities decrease as we go down a column and increase as we go across a row. The most striking exceptions are the inert gases, which have undefined electronegativities and do not readily share electrons with almost any other element. In summary, we have seen how the electronic properties of atoms translate into periodic properties of the elements. These periodic properties form a basis for organization of the periodic table and allow us to understand the nature of the chemical bond. Periodic trends in atomic radii, electron affinities, electronegativities, and ionization energies are therefore important fundamental properties of all the elements. Caltech presents the Chemistry Animation Project, using computer animation to visualize the chemical world.